Good evening, teacher and everybody. Um, I'm from group three. That been include Saudi, Li Kiang, Mani, Vietbay, Siu Ling, and me Kim Hai. Today we are gonna talk about the story of poison, and we are gonna do the analysis such as plot analysis, character analysis, theme analysis, literary devices, and reflection. And I'm going to talk about um, the plot analysis first. This plot analysis generally have five parts that expose Exposition is the beginning and rising action and the climax, which is the most exciting part of the story and and then falling action and resolution, which is the end of the story. Please move to the next slide. The exposition, it says that Timber Woods, the narrator, arrive home at his bungalow to discover his partner, Harry Pope, lying in bed and acting strangely. Harry is whispering and sweating all over. He tells Timber that a crate crawled onto the bed and is now sleeping under the sheet on Harry's stomach. Please move to the next slide. And then we move into the rising action. In this rising action is where the tension or suspense builds and the problem becomes more complicated. It says that Timber gets a knife from the kitchen in case he get bitten, which he will use to cut the skin and suck out the poison. Harry tells him to call the doctor. Doctor can buy a Chris to come at once. When he arrives, he quickly decides that the first thing to do is inject Harry with some snake bite serum. Carefully, can buy draws up Harry pajama sleeves and ties on a rubber ton tonic quid. Harry is struggling not to move or cough. Can buy smoothly insert the needle and administers the serum. Outside, the doctor tests that the serum is by no means a guarantee of safety. And please move to the next slide. We are moving on the climax, which is the most exciting part of the story. They decide to try to anesthetize the snake. They, they use chloroform to soak the mattress beneath Harry. The process is not safe and takes a very long time. Eventually, they begin to slowly lift the sheet of Harry. They see no sign of the snake. It could be up the leg of his, his pajamas. They scan the bite. At that, Harry goes lost control and he leaps to his feet, shaking his leg violently. Please move to the next slide. And the falling action is the sequence of, of events that happen after the climax that leads to resolution for the character that says when he stops, they realize that he hasn't been bitten and the snake is nowhere to be seen. Mr. Pop, you are of course quite sure you saw it in the first place, ask Kenabai. Please move to the next slide. And the resolution, which is the last part of the story, is the result or conclusion of the story. This is how things turn out for the characters who were involved in the conflict. It states that Harry turns red and asks if Gennabai is accusing him of being a liar. When the doctor doesn't reply, Harry begins screaming horrible Rexit insults at him. The doctor quickly leaves. Timber stops the doctor outside and apologizes for Harry. He thanks the doctor for his help. All he needs is a good holiday. 
and the wife says quietly before driving off. And now please let the Saudi take her part. So, <clears throat> the second part of this presentation is about character analysis. And without further ado, let's go to the first character. So the first character that I'm going to talk about is Timber Woods. He is the narrator and witness of the incident with the snake. After the reading, I would say that Timber is a trustworthy, careful and helpful person. According to the story, he is presented as a trustworthy friend who is honestly concerned and worried about Harry. Like when Harry said, why don't you get a doctor? At that moment, Timber immediately calls Dr. Genevai for help to bring Serum for great bite. Um, he is also a caring person. He cares about Harry, like uh, he, he, he brings an eye pack and laid it across Harry Ford's head to keep him cold. He also bring a knife and put it in his pocket just in case like something um, happen, he can cut the bitten place and suck the poison out. One more thing is, he is so helpful in trying to find all the possible solutions to help Harry, like um, when Timber whisper softly to Harry thinking about the best thing that he can do is to, um, to draw the sheet back very gently so he could look so we could take a look. Um, this is in the line 80. Yes. So he trying every way to like have Harry. Um, the other character is Dr. Gendabai. Um, I can describe Dr. Gendabai in two ways. The first one is he is kind because as you can see in the story when Timber calls him late at night for a Serum of great bite, he is immediately rushed to Timber House. He is clever, is the um, second thing that I would describe him because the first thing he does when he arrives is trying to inject the serum into Harry's, um, like just to make sure in case the snake bite him. It won't be that serious condition and and one more thing in a way that no one can think of is he used chloroform to soak in on the sheet directly in line with Harry stomach and as you already know that chloroform it is like smells bad like the smell of the hospital things like that um yes so he also has a motive uh, and this motive reveal his medical manner include the rule of keeping his patient who is in dangerous situation calm. As you can see in the part where Dr. Genderby look at Harry's eyes, even though he is not saying anything, but it's like he is trying to tell Harry to like, you know, keep quiet and stay calm. <clears throat> and the last character is Harry Pop. I have saved it the, last, the best for last and you might probably wonder why. Um, well, since Harry is the one who started the incident and also who, who, who causes the conflict around the story, for this reason, why not make it a mystery? Yeah, and so now I, I revealed it that Harry Pop is like he is patient, but dreamy and yet aggressive. Let's talk about the first one is patient. Harry is quite good at staying calm and making less noise. Um, like the part where he, um, you know, he stay quiet and calm and make, and he is trying to explain um, the situation to Timber. He spoke very softly, slowly, carefully, not to move any muscle. Like if he move a muscle, he will awake the snake. Um, he is also a dreamy person. The part where he stand up on 
his bed, jumped up and shook his leg, but found no snake anywhere. In my opinion, I think it is Harry who might have fallen asleep and dreamed about the snake advancing across his pen. And on the other hand, there might have been a snake that dramatized Harry. The last one, he is aggressive. He 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 aggressive toward Dr. Gendabai. Um like when Dr. Gendabai asked if he saw the snake or not, and Harry thought that the Dr. Gendabai accused him of being a liar, he immediately like dress talk to the doctor saying why you dirty little Hindu sewer rat. Or he keep um calling Dr. Kenderby um black, something like that, yes. Um this is the end of my my part. Um so let's go to another part which my class my member will talk about it. Thank you. So after listening I to Saudi explanations on the character analysis. I am, I am sure that you might have some idea in your mind uh, about the story and of course the character. So now let's take a look and listen to Tim's analysis. And after this, you will have a better understanding of the story. So before I proceed to the themes of the story, I think that you definitely understand what theme is about, but I just want to give you a quick review about themes. So theme is referred to stance taken on central topic or message of a story. To be easy to understand, theme is something that story want to tell us as a reader. So without further delay, let's move on to the themes of this story. So in this story, we uh, found out two men uh, themes which are ungrateful and racial or ethnic prejudice. So now let's move on to the first theme, which is ungrateful. So if we describe someone as ungrateful, we are criticizing them for not showing thanks or for being unkind to someone who has helped them or done them a favor. So in the story that is narrated by Wood, who upon arriving at Harry Bungalow, uh, witnesses his friend lying paralyzed in bed and trans in perspiration, Harry Pop claimed that he is in mortal danger because a deadly snake is crawling on his stomach underneath the sheet and he is too terrified to move. Then Wood tiptoed out to the hall and called to Dr. Ganderbay to bring his serums and come to access Harry. When Dr. Ganderbay come, when Dr. Uh, Ganderbay come, he tried to help Harry from the danger. A moment after, Harry began to pierce around and jump up. That was the first time he had moved. Then it was nothing happened. There's no snake in the shapes or on his stomach. Then the doctor suggests that the snake was just a figment of heavy imaginations. After hearing the doctor said, Harry stood on his bed in his striped pajama, glaring at Ganderbike, and the color began to spread over his cheek. He turned hostile and anger at the doctor, showing thankless and unkind to Dr. Ganderbike, who was trying to help him by shouting to the doctor, are you telling me I am a liar? So this show that Harry is ungrateful and unkind person to someone who has spent their time and effort to uh, help him from the danger. Beyond that, Harry started to mock and lock down on Dr. Ganderbite, which led me to the second themes of this story, uh, which is racial or ethnic prejudice. So this important message of the story is that racism is a poison of is a poison that infects everyone around you with hate. Racism is something that no one should experience in life. It's only in the last few paragraph of the story, uh, those that we rely that the auxiliary point is about racism. Harry Pop is perfectly willing to tolerate Dr. Ganderby as long as his life is in danger. But as soon as Dr. Ganderbike dared to question the white man, 
and thought the whole situation was just a figment of Harry's imagination. Harry let his true color show and start to discriminate Dr. Ganderbite by his color and say, why you dirty little Hindu sugar red? And he keeps saying, you dirty black to Dr. Ganderbite, which was terrible, the thing he was saying. His word had definitely hurt Dr. Ganderbite since he has spent his own time come to sell Harry from the danger. So overall, this whole story wanted to tell us that Harry was afraid of a uh, venomous snake when the only real poison in this situation was his racism. So here come to the end of a, the theme analysis. And next, a we uh, we take over. Thank you. Okay. Thank you so much, Wang Li Qiang, for a very good explanation of theme analysis. Now let's move on to our fourth part of our presentation today, which we will explore through the use of literary devices in our story, The Poison, such as irony, sarcasm, similes, symbolism, and imagery. Next, please. So in The Poison, the author illustrates two ironies, which are situational irony and verbal irony. There is also a sarcasm in our story too. But before we go deep into it, let us review a bit with their definition. What actually is a situational irony? A, situa a situational irony is when we describe an event that is not surprising, but contrary to what the audience expected. And with the verbal irony is when someone says one thing, but means the opposite. And the last one, what is sarcasm? Sarcasm is when someone says one thing about other people's action, but means the opposite. It means that they know that the other person is doing the opposite thing from what they said. So now let's get back to the first one with uh, the situational irony. We uh, There's actually a lot of situational irony in this story, but we only came up with two examples to show you. The first one was when Harry said, I hadn't been bitten. He whispered, not yet. It's on my stomach, lying there asleep. In line 39 to line 40. At this part, we we as audience would not actually expect it the, that there could be a snake on his stomach. Even in the story itself, mentioned in the part where Tim Burr thought about the surprising thing that Harry hadn't been beaten by the crates for hours, like a bloody hours, which is the opposite from the actual crates that kill a fair number of people each year in Bengal. And the second one in the line 92, when Harry gets met at a doctor who helped him with his problem and called him a dirty little sewer rat and you dirty black is also a part of situational irony because how could Harry was so mean to the doctor who actually has been helping him like that? It's actually not a very polite words to say and what Harry should do to his doctor. And now with the verbal irony, we also have found one too in the line 101 when Harry said, what in God's name does he think I'm doing? In this part was when Timber came back from inviting the doctor to see Harry that was lying on his bed with the uh, crates on his stomach. Uh, Timber told Harry that Dr. Ganderby is coming and the doctor said uh, for Harry to lie still. It's an example of a verbal irony because it is what Harry is saying that is a chasm. And Harry actually already knew that uh, uh, 
what he uh, sorry what he was doing and what the doctor is actually thinking about and with the last one about the sarcasm uh, we have come up with two the first one was in line uh, uh, is in line 282 when dr Bai asked uh, harry that uh, mr pope are you of course quite sure you saw it in the first place? In here, it shows case that there was a note of sarcasm in Ganderby's voice that he would have never employed in ordinary circumstances. And the other one here is when Dr. Ganderby asked Harry in the line 284 to 285, you don't think you might possibly have been dreaming, do you, Mr. Pope? At this point, the doctor actually realized that Harry has been, uh, what Harry has been doing all this time, but he just pretends to ask Harry in the opposite way and just look at Harry with the sarcasm that is not seriously intended. Okay, so uh, next slide. Let's move on to the similes of our story. So uh, the author also show a lot of similes in the poison tool, but due to the time consuming, we have only came up with three. The first one was uh, when Harry was lying there very still and tense as though he was holding on to himself hard because of sharp pain. I've highlighted as though he was holding on to himself hard because of sharp pain as the similes, because it means that Harry was lying on the bed like he was hurting so much from the crates, sharp pain and unable to move or talk. And the second one here was uh, when Harry was wearing a soft soled bedroom slippers and he walked across the floor noiselessly delicately like a careful cat. The uh, highlighted word like a careful cat here means that if we imagine or like we compare when Harry walk across the floor noiselessly to a cat, we know that a cat walk makes no sound at all even if they jump from the top of the table or like the top of the uh, roof over window. So uh, the author used the word careful cat here to give some more meaning to compare to Harry's walk as a silent walk. And the last one here was in the line uh, 147 to a line 149 was when Dr. Genabai holding the syringe almost flat against the arm, sliding the needle in sideways through the skin into the blue ring sliding it slowly but so firmly, it went in smooth as into cheese. Uh, and here the author actually compares the cheese to the syringe needle that was sliding in sideways through the skin into the blue vein of Harry's arm so firmly and smoothly as soft and as fast as sliding into a cheese. Okay, so now let's uh, go to the uh, symbolism. Next, please, of our story. So uh, we actually uh, only chose uh, the symbolism of the poison, which is in the title of the uh, story itself. And according to the story here, uh, the uh, poison actually symbolized two kinds of poison. The, uh, the first one was uh, poison from the snake because the story itself indicates that the snake is very poisonous, which could kill people and the snake itself is cold blooded and anesthetic does not work so well or so quick with such animals. And the other was the poisons of racism that Harry had towards Dr. Genderby in the last part when he uh, said to doctor that he was a little silver rat, something like that. Yes, yeah, so that's all of our symbolism. Now let's move on to our last part, which is the 
imagery of the poison. We have found uh, three, but there are actually more than that too. Um, the first one was when Timber said, I switched off the headlamps of the car so the beam wouldn't swing in through the window of the side bedroom and wake Harry Pope in line two to line three. From this imagery, we can clearly see that the author wants us to feel through the sense of sight that the beam of the car could not reach to the inside of Harry's bedroom window. And with the second one here was when Dr. Ganderby waited to pour some few drops of chloroform again and the heavy thickening smell of chloroform spread out over the room, bringing it faint, unpleasant memories of white coated nurses. In the highlight word here, with this second one, the author images through the sense of smell from the chloroform that thickened and spread out over the room. And the last one here was when Timber could see the heavy rupture of the chloroform swirling slowly like smoke above the pepper funnel in the line 222 to 227. The last one here was actually appeals to the sense of sight. So uh, he has come to uh, the end of our literary devices. Let's move on to the last one, which is the reflection that will be presented by Siling. Thank you. Yes, thank you. So next I'm going to present about the reflection of this story. The next slide. This story is misunderstood by so many people thinking that the whole story was about the issues between men and the great on Harry's stomach. It never was about that conflict, but instead it was the symbolize of this whole story. The poison that they speak about so much wasn't the poison of the snake, but actually it is racism. Harry only tolerates Dr. Gandabai while he is helping him stay alive and when Harry's life is in danger. Until Harry shows his true colors about what he thinks upon Dr. Gandabai once the doctor questioned him about lying about the great and once Harry knows, he's safe. Next slide, please. Move to our reflection. Sorry. Move to our reflection. Today's whole story is very suspenseful, but the best example is at the climax, Timber and Mr. Gadabai are about to take the blanket off. On page 70 in line 270 to 271, it says, we must be careful, he said. It may be anywhere. It could be up the leg of his pajamas. It increased the tension of the story and makes us want to read and know more about the story. This story makes their point using dark humor and have a surprise ending. Also, it exhibits neither of these features. The central theme is the racism that existed under prestigious colonial rule. The next slide. In the story, we learn that there are several kinds of poison. Unlike the deadly crate, some of them kill quite slowly. Also, we learned that it is wrong to create a first over nothing and that one should own up to the mistakes. And now the presentations come to the end. Thank you for your paying attention to our presentation. If there are any questions, please let us know. We will try our best to respond all your questions. Thank you.